It's the first of our four Winter Series finals tonight. Winter Festival 2003, the $92,000 Cape and Cutter final. And here they come. They're off and nuclear finale. Cannons from the outside for Silverman. From the inside comes Armbrough Wallflower who guns out there with Campbell. And time frame end leaves in third. And Molly can do a tucks in fourth around the first turn. And Silverman has the pedal down with nuclear finale to take over here. Armbrough Wallflower second to the opening quarter. Time frame end is third. Molly can do it is fourth. Artifaction is fifth. And then it's Armbrough View followed by Tupelo Roseanne, the trailer seventh. And Campbell now quarter moves. Retakes with Armbrough Wallflower past the quarter in just 28 and two fifths. Slow early pace here, Armbrough Wallflower, impressive winner last week, takes charge here. A nuclear finale and Silverman will ride the pocket with time frame in third. Molly can do it as fourth as they crawl up this backstretch and head towards the half. Artifaction is fifth. It's Armbrough View sixth and she shoots the gap as the outer tier develops. Then it's Tupelo Roseanne and Pierce will commit now first over with time frame in and take a shot at Armbrough Wallflower off a half of a pedestrian 57 and four. Campbell's got the brakes on here with Armbrough Wallflower and takes a dead aim now on the outside. Pierce does with time frame in first over into second. Nuclear finale is now in the box third. Molly can do it a second over. We'll try to rally off the slow pace here. Armbrough View is locked in fifth now. Up third over is Artifaction, sixth, and Tupelo Roseanne is still trailing, and the racing past three quarters. Armbrough Wallflower and Campbell in control here, trying to go all the way with this one. Time frame in the first over. Nuclear finale on the inside, 126 and two. A well-rated Armbrough Wallflower leads them home in the Cape and Cutter, and Campbell goes to work. She tries to open up. Armbrough Wallflower by two. Game first over, time frame in. Off cover, here comes Molly Can Do It with her customary late charge, and then it's Nuclear Clear finale followed by arm roll view late and it's arm roll wallflower a masterful front end steer by hall of famer john campbell to take the cape and cutter final over molly can do it and a game time frame and one fifty three and one the unofficial winner arm roll wallflower a four-year-old bay mare by village jasper out of apple country by strikeout bred in ontario by the armstrong brothers Trained here by Ron Coyne Jr., winning driver John Campbell, who won this last year with Yes, It's True in the Stakes, mark a 151 and two fifths. Hails from the Ontario based stable of Bob Young, who took over her training last October, owned by Stan Clemensic of Trenton, Ontario, and his sons Tim and Andy. She had some sickness problems last summer and didn't race a lot in August and September but she won an Ontario Sire Stakes Super Final and Canadian Breeders' Championship and has really developed into a top-class mare under the care of Robert Young and down here in New Jersey, Ron Coyne Jr. And their main goal this season, the Roses Are Red and the Breeders' Crowns. So Armbro Wallflower impresses here two in a row and romps wire to wire in tonight's Cape and Cutter Final in 153 and one fifth, John Campbell's third win in the Cape and Cutter, also winning it in 1990 with Annie Crombie. In a few moments, we'll be getting the winner's circle reaction with Bob Hollywood Hayden in the winner's circle. Price is up to Armbrough Wallflower. Sam McKee's pick here, 360, 222, 20, and number one, Molly Can Do It, 242, 20. Three, time frame end, 340. Two, one exact is 640. A 213 trifecta, $32.40. Post time for the fourth race, 832 in 15 minutes. John Apato and Lori Haywood Apato in the winner's circle, making the trophy presentation to winning driver John Campbell. Post time for the fourth in 15 minutes, 832. With winning driver John Campbell. John, it didn't take Ombro Wallflower too long to acclimate here to the Meadowlands, did it? No, but she's the type of filly I think she'll race anywhere. She's just very professional about her work. Uh, you can race her any way you want, and um, she's a very high-quality filly. Tell us about the track condition tonight. The track's excellent. They've scraped it. Uh, the footing's great. As long as we don't get any more rain, it's, it's going to be okay. Early strategy in the race. You had post one. There's a scratch in here. Richie Silverman came after you early. What were you thinking there? Just to get him around me so I could get back to the front and control the race. Uh, you know, I thought if she got a soft enough middle half, she'd be tough to catch, and I knew Molly can do it. would be coming strong on the end of it because she always does. 57 and four and a half uh, right there was uh, you're looking pretty good yeah she felt strong you know I knew she would have a, a real big sprint to her but uh, 
as I said, Molly can do it, she finishes strong every time, so I was, still wasn't uh, counting my money yet. You've driven some of the top mares in the sport. Uh, Umbro Wallflower potentially one of those? Certainly is. I think it's really special for a four-year-old this time of year to compete against these older mares. Uh, I'm actually surprised that one can do it because uh, it, it's very difficult to do it the, the first part of the year. Okay, John Campbell, congratulations. Cape and cutter number three for the connections. John Campbell. John Coyne, Jr.